testing one, two, okay. I'll use this one. All right, um, back again for those who weren't here when I was up earlier. I just want to say welcome to you. I pray that God will bless as we go through the program today. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we come now boldly to your throne. We ask that you will be with us. You will take full control of this proceeding. May our spiritual eyes be open and may we be drawn close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to take whatever you have, your phone, your Bible, your tablet, or whatever it is, and let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Now, I did promise that I'll sing. And uh, one brother came and told me that I should sing. So, I'll give you a little treat. But here's what will happen. You'll have to come back this afternoon. Advent brothers, you'll have to come back this afternoon. And then, what will happen? I'll get my wife to sing with me. You see, when she sings with me, I sound much better. I, and I sing by myself, it's not so well. So I'll get her to sing with me. Then I, I will sing by myself, and then the two of us will sing together. So you'll get an extra treat. Make sure you're back. Daniel chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Now, you have it? You don't have it as yet? Let me see the hands of all those who have it, because you'll have to read with me. All right. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to read according to the... Um, Punctuation marks. So wherever that is in yours, you'll pick up. I'll start, and then you'll pick up af right after me. Is that okay? Now, whether you think it's not okay or not, that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> so here we go. That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, harp, psaltery, and all kinds of music. Now, let's go again. Only one person I'm hearing. At least my ears work. I don't reach the age I can hear so well as yet. So, are we ready? On this side, I hear yes. What about on this side? Are you ready over here? Okay, let's go. I'll, I'll start again. That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, harp, psaltery, and all kinds of music, And whosoever, let's read together, and whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall at the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. All right. Now, we have been doing a lot of singing for the morning, which is very good, and I like singing. I hear my brother on my left talk about Advent Brothers. That's a group that we had in Montserrat. Oh, yes, that's where I'm from. I'm from Montserrat. So now you know. And that's a group, that, a male group, a cappella group that we had in Montserrat. And then in Anguilla, that's where I was living before I come here, we had a group called Advent Vocal Band. And um, Seba was in one of them. <laughs> we sang together. Now, we're going to look at music, its effects, and what's behind it. Some of you may have heard this before, but there's, a, I, I, there's this guy, he's called Eddie Grant. He's from Guyana, and he's a singer. And his label was Ice Label. And what he has on his record, he said, that everything on ice is twice as nice. So if you heard it before, and you're hearing it now, it's twice as nice. Okay, so we have, let me see if I can work this thing, yes. Now, what is music? We have heard some things this morning, and our brother there was explaining some things about music. But let's see if there's a definition for it. Um, okay. Music, one, is the... Come, read with me. Somebody told me that I shouldn't put this, but I, I shouldn't put the things. But I wanted everybody to see and to read. So let's read together. The art of our sounds in so as to tenuous on unified and as through melody harmony 
rhythm, and timbre. So we have something else. So music, you can get the instrument, as we heard just a while ago. But when God created us, as a goodly brother said this morning, he created us so that we're able to produce music without instrument. And he says two. What, what's the next one? Vocal or instrumental sounds possessing a degree of melody, harmony, or rhythm. The Adventist Home, page 407 and paragraph 3, says, The law of popular music, and I want us to catch this. I feel alarm as I witness everywhere the what? The frivolity of who? And who profess to believe what? Note this. Who profess to believe the truth? God does not seem to be in their what? Thoughts. They are filled with what? Filled with what? Nonsense. Their conversation is only empty what? Now, nowadays, the music that you hear, and you hear some people listening to, is full of nonsense. That means it doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't make sense to me, but it probably makes sense to them because they're listening to it. They have, keen, they have a keen ear for, and who, who knows? Satan knows what, what, what? Organs to excite, to animate, engross, and charm the mind so that Christ is not what? Desired. Anybody's a witness to that here? That Christ is not desired these days? The spiritual longing of the soul for divine knowledge, for a growth in grace, are what? Wanting. As taken from Adventist Home, page 407 and paragraph 3. So let's look at some uses of music. Worship. What are we worshiping here today? So the number one, we have worship. Now, you may have to take some notes because I told I have a, a little bit of time. So we won't be able to go through all the passages. But here we have Second Chronicles 5 and verse 13. Let's look at that quickly. Second Chronicles, for those who have the technological Bible, you should be able to get to that quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 5. And verse 13. Have it? It says, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instrument of music, and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy is endured for ever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. So who, who is being worshipped here? The God of? The God of? The God of heaven. Now we have to differentiate between them. Because the Bible said that they are God's many and Lord's many. So here we find that it is the God of heaven who is being worshipped. Now, in Daniel chapter 3, 1 to 12 and verse 15, we have another um, thing going on with music and so forth. So, we want to know what is going on in this. We read part of, the, um, part of worship of it there. If you know the story, you know the story. What was taking place? What was taking place then? If you don't know, refresh yourself in your Bible. Daniel chapter 3. What was happening there? Come talk to me. I, I know that you're accustomed to sit down and just listen. But today, we're doing a dialogue. So you can talk to me. I give you permission to speak. Where is the pastor? He's here? He's here. The pastor is here. Now the pastor is down there sitting down and I'm up here. So he has given me permission to so I can tell you. You can speak to me. So who? Huh? Yes. You hear pastor, sir? Let me tell you that you can speak. All right. So who, what, what is taking place here? The, 
They were doing what? They were doing an worship to one image, an idol. So we have that taking place here. Notice the difference in the two. Now, in Exodus chapter 32, 15 to 25, that one we will come back to. We will come back to this one so that we can find out what was taking place. So we're looking at the uses of music. Now, war. Now we're looking at the uses of music. So we find that in music, they use it for number one, what? Worship. And number two, we have war. So in Joshua chapter 6, 1 to 16, they use the instrument of music for when they were getting ready to fight. And when they hear a certain, now one of our scripture reading says that when you hear a certain type of sound that you must, they, they should do what? What were they to do? Bow down. Now in Joshua, when they, were, when they heard a certain type of music, they knew exactly when to attack. And what, and what they were to do. Now you may have to take notes so that you can um, refer back to these again. Now revelry. Anybody know what is revelry? Eh? Party. Now it's a little more than party, you know. It's a little more than party. Now, I'm from the Caribbean and we have time that they have revelry. You know what is that, my brother? Revelry? They only have carnival? They have carnival. And I've come to find out that there are lots of carnival here in England. When I was in the Caribbean, I didn't even know that England have carnival. But you see people travel from place to place and when they migrate or wherever they move to, they carry their customs with them. And so, we have revelry. So let's look at um, Exodus chapter 32. And you will find something here. Exodus chapter 32. We'll have to move quickly. Some we will read, some we will not. It's interesting what is happening here. Exodus, yeah, this thing ain't doing it. Okay, so we go, anybody have it? You want to read for me? What's the story about? Exodus chapter 32, what, what's, what's happening there? Now, the story is that Moses was where? In the mount. And from verse 15, what is happening? Moses turned and went down from the mount with the, what, what he had in it, the tablets. You know, now these days that people say that it's abolished. Well, I'm glad that, anybody here think that what was written on it is abolished? I don't think so, you would not have been here today. And so he had the tablets in his hand. And the tablets were the work of God and the writing was the writing of God, grave on the tablets, on the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of, when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, what did he say? The noise sound like? The noise of war in the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for the mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing, do I hear? Notice that he was able to differentiate the sound that he was hearing. And it came to pass, as soon as they came nigh unto the, the camp, that he saw the calf. So what was involved in this worship? What were they doing? They were worshiping. You, you're going to sleep on me. I, I, one sister is answering me all the time, but the others have gone to sleep. What were they doing? They were worshipping. And they were worshipping what? A calf. It is said in the, in the spirit of prophecy that they made the calf and commentaries have it. Because they say if they go back to Egypt, they could have said, no, we were forced to leave. So see when we were in the, in the wilderness or in the desert that we had the calf with us. So that we, they could get easy acceptance back 
into Egypt. So they had the calf. And Moses said unto Amen, What did this people do unto thee? And that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. But let's back up a little. Um, they were worshipping the calf. Um, 18. 19. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' Moses's anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf and they that, made, that they had made and burned it in fire and ground it to powder and strayed it upon the water. Now, what were they doing when Moses saw them and Joshua? What were they doing? They were what? Dancing. Now, if you know a little bit about carnival, you will know what takes place at carnival. Now, in Montserrat, we have carnival in December. And most places, anyway, some places have it in Easter, just after Easter, eh? February. And, Easter, and some have it in, in uh, like Trinidad and those places have it. And so... It is said that wherever there is carnival, that nine months after, the population grow. Now you can figure out what that one is. Now, the <laughs> you, you'll be surprised how they dress. Because in the carnival, here, the people were naked and dancing. And that's what happened in carnival. There are some places like Brazil, um, they have a thing that they call painting. Yes. They paint your clothes on you. But you're actually naked. So what they use, they use paint. Now I, I saw a thing that this guy went out with a young lady. He never even realized that she was naked. Her clothes was painted on. So they do that and they have skimpy things. So but we'll see. But Moses, the CVD says, but Moses replied, it doesn't sound like they are shouting because they have won a war or lost a battle. It sounds like it's a wild party. So the CB says, but Moses says, it isn't the sound of a victory song. It isn't the song of defeat. It's the sound of party song is what I hear. Now, I told you something about... Um, those of us who from the Caribbean who have known about Aru and those guys and Sparrow and all those Calypso and so forth will know what happened when you hear their music and we'll come to something else. Now healing. Music is being used for healing. We were told that this morning also. So let's see what if we have Bible reference. First Samuel 16, 14 to 16. What, what is this about? First Samuel 14. 16, 14 to 16. First Samuel, chapter 16, 14 to 16. That's those two verses we look at. What was happening here? Who was sick? Saul, King Saul. He was sick. What did he do? What did he do? He called David to do what? Play for him. Now, look at this. Did you know that King George I did the same thing? Now, we are told that King George, you can read, he had problems with memory loss and stress management. He read from the Bible the story of King Saul and recognized that Saul had experienced the same type of problems that he was experiencing. Thank God for the Bible. So those of us who don't want to read it, we need to start reading it. Because King George found out something. And what did he do? George recognized that Saul overcame his problems by using what? Special music. With this story in mind, King George asks who? George Handel. Anybody know that um, Frederick Handel? Anybody know um, the Messiah Hallelujah Chorus? Yes, this is the same guy. That, so he got him to write some special music for him that would help him in the same way that music helps all. Handel wrote his water music for this purpose. I want to say to us, brother, whenever you're going through any stress problem, always have a song 
in your heart. Keep a song in your mind. So when the devil comes knocking at your door, you can start singing a song that will lift you up. If people who is not recognizing the God of heaven can recognize that God gives music for this purpose and use it to benefit themselves, how much more us who serve the God of heaven. Keep a song in your heart. Rejoicing. How did you feel this morning when everybody was singing? Didn't you feel good? I, I normally wonder when I go to church. You know, sometimes I have to do song service. Am I letting myself out here? And um, I would watch and see some people with their lips like it is sewed together. You know who lips are sewed together? Anybody can tell me who lips are normally sewed together? The people who are dead. Once you're dead, they will sew your lips together. But when you come to church, sing. Let me tell you something. The, the people may not hear the speaker. When pastor comes up here to, to preach or the elders, the people around may not hear him or hear them. But when you sing, they will hear you. And that in itself is a powerful witness for good. Now, several will know, um, will know who I'm speaking about. Um, there was this little man. I wonder if he was there when you were in Montserrat. Reggie. And Reggie was a song service leader. My wife was not always a Seventh-day Adventist. And you know, uh, it's different here in England because <laughs> it seemed like everybody loved the, the Seventh-day Adventists. Well, there are a few people who don't. But in Montserrat, they are very, the other churches have, and people are very antagonistic against Seventh-day Adventists. But one thing they will say, they say the only thing Seventh-day Adventists are good for is for singing. <laughs> and they will say that we know the Bible. So Jehovah's Witnesses wouldn't come to our doors. They wouldn't come to our doors. And so every Sabbath morning, Reggie would be out there leading song service in the church. And I hear my wife say, oh, I used to love to hear that little man sing. But she didn't like Seventh-day Adventists. But she liked the singing. Who knows? She's a Seventh-day Adventist now. And that could have been the, the motivating factor in getting here. When one time we were going to church, and we used to have to walk, say, well, go up to the field. And when we reach up one time, she say, how should I say it? I'll say it in the dialect. I hope you understand. Are you? Me one of them now. I say, one of who? Me and Seventh-day Adventists. I say, so what's wrong with that? She didn't love Seventh-day Adventists. So she was saying the realization hit her that she's now one of the Seventh-day Adventists. So I said to her, prepare yourself for what you used to give out because it will come back to you. <laughs> it did come back. She was unable to hang it. I used to have to comfort her. So now, 1 Samuel 18 and verse 6, we have David and the rejoicing. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel. Who came out? Thank God for the women. They couldn't change this. That's why it's there. When you read the Bible, you'll find it talk about men, 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 men. But they couldn't change this. So that's why it's, me it's mentioned here. So ladies, take comfort when you come to church. When I, I may do a song service for you, you'll find out what I normally do. So the ladies came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tablets, with joy, and with the instrument of music. And they said something that um, David, when, when David heard, David went down to his enemies to hide from Saul. And he heard them saying, isn't this David? The all the women sing about said, Saul has killed his thousand and David is 10,000. You know what David did? David pretended that he was crazy, you know. Start dribbling on himself and marking up on the wall. So the king had to run him out of the place. <laughs> now let's look at messaging. The phone. Now what happened, I'm not able to do it. When, how do you know when you get a text message? 
How do you know? It makes a different sound. Now, music is being used on the phone to get messages across, whether by voice or by texting. Now, this one is a text message. So when, it, when you get a text, it will make a certain sound. When it rings, it will make a certain sound. When it is busy, it makes a certain sound. Which one of these sounds that aggravates you the most? Huh? The busy tone. <laughs> when you want to get somebody on your phone, go beep, beep, beep in your ear. It's just... And the other thing is when you're calling somebody and they don't answer their phone. It's aggravating. What is doing that? The music, the sort of sound that they put on the phone. Anybody witness to that? When you're calling somebody, especially when you have a message and you want to give to them and they're not answering. Or when you call them and the phone is busy and you keep calling and it's busy, busy, busy. You lose your patience. Now, subliminal messaging. This is another way of getting messages across and we receive messaging, messages and obey them. Note this. We obey them without even realizing it. So what is subliminal? Now remember when I was here this morning, I said that lots of people go to the shop and come back with bags full. Didn't buy what they go for? All right, let's see what's happening here. Relating to things that influence your mind. Subliminal is relating to things that influence your mind in a way that you do not notice. Now, lots of men can testify to that, you know, whether they want to or not. And the ladies may not want to. You know, um, when you want to tell a lady certain thing and you're not brave enough, you get a song that says it for you. That's how it, that's, you don't do it here in England, Pastor. You do that, you get a song that speaks for you and send it to the lady so it will play. And the lady will get the message. Or you go and tell her yourself. <laughs> You get a song, you get a love song, and you send it, and it will sing, and you keep sending love songs. And, um, see that? You, 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 <laughs> you say you play, you play, he's able to play, so he can do it himself. But for me, he can't play, so I'll send a song. And I'll get a message. Send a subliminal message. Now, so, subliminal messages are done in shopping. You go to the store, and there's music playing. Some you recognize, but some you don't. So sometimes you go into the store, and there's no music. You think there's no music, because you're not hearing it. But your subconscious mind is picking it up. And so you will go and buy things that you don't necessarily need. Anybody could testify to that? You go home, and when you go home, you have things in your bag you didn't go for? Nobody. I thank God for you. You're good shoppers. Well, I'll tell you that it happened to you. you. You can't testify that it happened to you. When you go home, you, the things that you wanted, you look on your list, you didn't have it. Because of... And you'll go for one item. Anybody ever go to the shop for one item? And how much did you come back with? Uh -huh. <laughs> you come back with a whole bag or two bags. One item you went for. And you didn't even get the one item. You come back with a bag full. So, backward masking. So, backward masking is another way that they will get you, they will give you messages that they want. So, let's try a little thing. Anybody have something to write? You have, some, you have paper to write? I'll get you to write something. You write dog, that's D O G. And you write S I. So they're separate, eh? Dog, C, Natas. So you write N A T A S. Dog, C, Natas. You finish? Read it backwards. The pastor, you open your mouth. Uh huh. <laughs> you can't do what? <laughs> what? It, what does it say? Satan is God. 
When you read it forward, it may not make sense. That is exactly what they do with backward masking. So lots of, as I said this morning, backward masking started in about 1961 by Warner Brothers. And later on, the Beatles started doing it in their songs. So you'll find that lots of people commit crimes because of the music, the songs that they listen to. We have, we have um, Manson, Charles Manson, who went out killing, and he was listening to those songs, and the back, he said that back Revolution 9 especially, which is an instrumental, it was said that the messages in it were saying, string them up. String them up, and he went out, and he, he killed. Now, now, back masking is a record technique that it sounds, so we, back masking is a deliberate process. Now, lots of people who are into the music, this is something that you may need to, there are some books that you can get that will help you to understand. And what they do, they deliberately sell themselves. They make a pack with the devil. So that's why you'll hear some songs who skyrocket to number one. Um, give me a, a gospel song that you ever hear is number one on the chart. You won't find him. Now everybody know about Michael Jackson, ain't it? You know Michael Jackson. You now when he was in trouble, he made a song called We Are Not Alone. You, you remember that song? Quickly, where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? No, I don't want it. I don't want him. I don't want him to keep you because you will be singing it. You'll be singing it as simple as you may think. Later on, you'll be singing that. Quick time. That was number one. And I said to some people, Michael Jackson will never spend a day in jail. Did he? No. Any one of us can be going to court and have the judge in there waiting on us while we're outside in a car dancing? None. So it was a deliberate, no. So now we're going to look at some, some singers and what is in their songs. You know, this afternoon, if time permits, we'll do some more because time is running. So we have this group called Led Zeppelin. Now, this song, the song Stairway to Heaven, yesterday I saw somebody with it on a T-shirt. Long time ago, they made it long time ago, and somebody revived it. And so it's popular once again. Stephen to Heaven says, there's a lady who's sure that all that glitters is what? Gold. And she's buying a stairway to where? You know, lots of us think we could buy a stairway to heaven. When she gets there, knows if the stores are all closed. With a word, she can get what she came for. And says, ooh, 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 ooh. And she's buying a stairway to heaven. There's a sign on the wall, but she wants to be sure because you know that sometimes words have two meanings. Look at that. You see that sometimes words have two meanings. So let's see. Here, here, here's the same lyrics played backwards. Now you can read for yourself. What does it say? Now, are you there? You're down there? You still here? Okay, so you can read this for yourself. Yeah? Why song here? Oppositional. All on track. All arriving. They all sing and they are one. Shall I load you now, prisoner? Or oh, hear him, Christian within me. It stirs my sin, the river. Oh, she swells with our, our what? Lousiness. All my life will end for him. We are all out of signs. I know I'm sort of shocked to hear the Lord, my God, will now save me, or I will never be. I will never be what? Saved. Because I live with who? Satan. One wish today that you'll all pray for. Three who, who will make it here late. Pray now and you'll see. The Lord turned me off. But oh, I was a shaggy fool, clothed in agony, lost at a height. There's no escaping it, nor his words. So here's to my sweet who? Satan. The one whose little path 
would make me sad. Whose power is Satan? He'll give those with him. 666. Now you may have, some of you may have sung it, not knowing what you are singing. Lena Del Rey, the song Summertime Sadness. Kiss me hard before you go summertime. Is summertime now? I just want you to know that, baby, you are the best. When played backwards, sell myself for more sound of music. And that's repeated. I will follow for some money. Sell myself for more music. He must sell Satan. See, I will follow Satan. I will follow Satan. And this is some of our, some of our favorite artists, Beyonce. She's popular now, isn't it? It's very popular. Song, Why They Are Beautiful. And I think she has a song called um, Umbrella. Is that, you see, have the song Umbrella. Now, diamond used for coal, look young cause they got soul. That's why they are beautiful and my heart used to coal till your hands laid on my soul. Baby, that's why you're beautiful. Backwards. That's it. Lyrics went played backward. And now, anybody, let me, you want me to go back? For we are Satan's, for we are Satan's. Here's tonight to dance, stargazer. And that's the lyrics played backward. Anybody know this art, this, this song? Nobody here know this song? You know this song? You don't know it? I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, I know it well, I have to know it. Yes, that's it. No. This may surprise you that lots of people do it for a special music in church. Anybody here know this song? I can only imagine. No, you're ashamed now? You're afraid of what is behind it? <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know, you don't know. But the Bible says there come, when you don't know that God, what? Wings out. But there comes a time. Right. So he says, I can only imagine what it would be like. I will play it for you later if time permit. When, uh, like, when I walk by your side, I can only imagine what my eyes will see. Now look at this. Backwards. That's it played when, it, when it's played backwards. That's the sublim that's a backward masking message in that song. So if you if there's anyone who used to do it for special music, now you can think what you'll want to do. That's what is in that song when it's played backwards. Now, that's B and C doing a six six six. Anybody used to see Trump? What Trump used to do? Doing this? When he started first, he used to be doing that. So you have Beyonce doing that. Then look at some effects. And the human mind shut down after three or four repetition of a rhythm or a melody. So that's why you'll find some people behaving a sort of way when you repeat songs. So you'll want to know why we don't have the repetitive when we're doing choruses and so forth. Uh, no, so we have, um, now I want to, to say something just before I close. Bob Larson, he, he writes a book um, called Your Kids and Rock and Devil's Disciples and, and Dancing with Demons. He, he wrote those books. If you're able to go on the, um, Amazon, you'll be able to find him and read. He says he's a Christian musician, remembers in the 70s, teen would... I want you to take note of this, of what used to happen. Tien would bring raw eggs to a, rock, uh, to a rock concert and put them on the front of the stage. The eggs would be hard-boiled by the music before the end of the concert and could be eaten. Now, there are, there's, there are animals and plants. Now, in, the, in one of the books, Bob Larson says that this Christian evangelist went to um, some place in Africa, and the, the, the guys were playing their music, which would have been Christian music. And the natives came and asked him, why is it that he's allowing his children to play the music that they do for science, to bring up the dead? 
So he says, but they did a test on rats and on plants. They would subject the rats to hard or to rock music and the rats would run away from it. They would do the plants and the plants would grow away from it. So we have to know what music we are listening to. And um, you can see me a little um, later for some more information on this as I, I was given the signal that you should start a roundup now before you folks start um, falling down for, for hunger. So that's it for now. This afternoon, if there's time, and as I understand that there will be question and answer questions, I, I'm not professing that I'll be able to answer all the questions, but we'll try our best. Father God will help us that our, the music we listen to will be inspirational, that will draw us closer to God, but not drive us away from him. God bless.